something very unique happened this past weekend. That is that the Green Bay Packers just lost a number one seed, lost the number six seed. The Packers lost to the San Francisco 49ers. But more than that, that team may be done. The Green Bay Packers may be looking to rebuild and re retool their roster. And that may be without Aaron Rodgers, which would also mean Devontae Adams may not sign with the Packers. That really means that if Aaron Rodgers decides to leave and let's say he goes to a team like Washington, a team like the Texans or one of these other teams that may need a quarterback, that means Devontae Adams may leave the Packers and he doesn't necessarily have to follow Aaron Rodgers, which means the Raiders can swoop in and potentially get one of Derek Carr's best friends on this roster. I'm very excited to talk about this. Now, I do think there's a chance this will not work because of salary cap reasons, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. But just to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this, if you guys think about this, right? Devontae Adams is a superstar wide receiver. You can argue he is one of the best two or three wide receivers in the league. You can argue he is the best wide receiver in the league. But more than that, Devontae Adams is a game changer. You can throw him a five yard slant pass and he'll take it the distance. You can throw it to him in double coverage in the end zone and he'll he will go up and get the ball and the raiders really don't have that type of player now you can argue darren waller is that type of player but he didn't do it for us this past year right and in my opinion i think when you get a guy like Devonte adams you open up the offense so much more now earlier today i talked a little bit about the raiders potentially bringing in a guy like gerard mayo dave ziegler uh, of the new england patriots as their gm I don't know if those guys would go out and get Devontae Adams. If you look at the way the New England Patriots are currently built, they're not built by going and paying wide receivers. They're built through the draft. They build their offensive line. They build their defensive line and their secondary. And in my opinion, if the Raiders were to get those two guys, either Mayo or McDaniels, with the combination of the GM as Dave Ziegler, who is a New England guy, I don't know if we get Devontae Adams, but... We're not guaranteed to get those guys, right? We may just keep Rich Basaccia. We may go out and, and get a guy like Jim Harbaugh. So let, let's talk about Devontae Adams. And let's talk a little bit about why it may not work from a salary cap perspective. Right now, the Las Vegas Raiders, as you guys can see via Spot Track, have $27.6 million in cap space. Now, keep this in mind. We have some expiring contracts, uh, free agents, guys that need to get re-signed. And we basically have... 27 million dollars to bring those guys back guys like nicholas morrow and jonathan hankins and Jalen rashard our defense tackles like quentin jefferson and solomon thomas among our number one corner casey hayward right so we have a lot of guys that are kind of up for free agency that we literally have 27 million dollars to essentially sign now uh, there is a way that the Raiders can save some cap right uh, you could cut guys that have underperformed right guys I like Corey Littleton, uh, guys like Carl Nassib, guys like Nick Kukowski. And I wouldn't say Carl Nassib necessarily underperformed, um, but you could cut those three guys. Now, you guys can see that the dead cap hit for Corey Littleton says 14 million. Uh, Carl Nassib says 6.6 .6, and Kukowski says five. However, there are uh, there there is like a there is a rule that kind of allows you to save more cap. Basically, you push the dead cap into the future. Uh, that would be called the post June first cut. Uh, you can cut a guy like Corey Littleton today and designate him as a post June first cut. So what that means is uh, basically instead of taking a dead cap hit of 14 million, you can say that we're going to do a post June one cut, uh, which then would mean that of that 14 million. 11 million goes into next year and we take about a three to four million dollar hit this year so if the raiders were to cut Corey littleton which i actually think they're going to uh, they would use that post june 1st designation on him now we can do it up for two players but let's just say we cut Corey littleton and, and nick kwiatkowski uh, essentially we would save about 15 million dollars on top of what we already have uh, so we would have about 45 to 50 million dollars in cap space now keep in mind we would spend, I'd say, $25 million on Devontae Adams, right? I, I really believe that if we had $50 million in cap space, $25 would go to Devontae Adams, which means we'd have about $25 million to figure out the rest of the roster. And that kind of scares me. It scares me because I, I don't know how much of an impact Devontae Adams and Derek Carr will have together if we have to score 30 points a game because the defensive side of the ball doesn't have the guys to make stops. On top of that, is Darren Waller going to continue to play for the Raiders? I don't think he's playing under the current cap. 
Uh, I've asked some guys within the Raiders organization. No one can officially confirm that Darren, Darren, Darren Waller has issues with this contract. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does, right? Because I, I think Darren Waller realizes that getting seven, eight million dollars a year when Travis Kelsey's getting 17, Kittle's getting 16, why would he continue continue to play under this contract where he's not guaranteed much money? Why would he continue to pay play where if he gets hurt, he can impact himself long term in terms of the value he, he could potentially bring to a team? Darren Waller is not obligated to play under this contract. And truth be told, I think Darren Waller is going to want to get restructured. I think Derek Carr is going to want more than $19 million, which is what he's going to fall for under the cap next season. Not saying that we need to change that $19 million hit, but you have to start thinking about the future. If Devontae Adams gets four years, $100 million, right? An average of $25 million per year. How do the Raiders fit that into their current budget? Max Crosby is going to want 15 to 20 million dollars and that would considered a, a kind of a team friendly contract because remember Cleo Mack got 25 million with the salary cap only going up I could see someone like Crosby bringing in close to 30 million dollars right if Max Crosby has another season next year like he just had he can demand 30 million and maybe the Raiders can't afford him but another team will right the Texans the the Dolphins right the Colts some of these teams that are ready to make the playoffs that may just need that much more of a pass rush may say let's just go all in right we have a rookie quarterback we can support max crosby's contract but if that's the case i don't know how i kind of feel about that right like would you guys rather keep max crosby and casey hayward and quentin jefferson guys that have made impacts or would you rather go the offensive route and say let's have a top 10 offense and let the defense continue to struggle I think the Raiders would be looking at it in the wrong terms. I think the smart thing to do for the Raiders would be to say, if Devontae Adams wants 25 to 30 million, let's just go draft the wide receiver. Let's see if we can find Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson or even a T Higgins. Let's go draft one of these guys. On top of that, remember, we had drafted Henry Ruggs and that was a, it was a pretty good player, man. He was definitely turning the Raiders roster around. Or I said the Raiders offense around. The Unfortunately, the whole situation happened with him. But if you guys think about it, like that was a pretty good pick. Why not just go get another one of those guys? At the same time, who's our right tackle right now? Brandon Park is about to be a free agent and the Raiders may have to pay him or go and upgrade at the right tackle position. Now, you could argue that Denzel Good could play right tackle and you would have to resign him. Obviously, he's also a free agent, but you really have to think like, how do the Raiders fix their roster and bring in Devontae Adams on top of that? What makes you think the Packers won't franchise tag Devontae Adams and say, if you want him, give us a first round pick. There's a lot that's going to go into the Raiders potentially getting Devontae Adams. I'm going to, I'm going to make the argument that the Raiders should skip out on Devontae Adams. I, I love the player. I think he's a great player, but I think the wide receiver position is one of the most un overrated positions in the league. And I say overrated because Stefan Diggs was just another wide receiver before Josh Allen. You can argue that uh, guys like Nelson Aguilar were average wide receivers, but when they got the targets under a offense led by Derek Carr and John Gruden, he had his best year. You can argue that Jared Cook had his best year with the Raiders, but with Drew Brees and an offense that doesn't utilize tight ends, he's just another average player. And what I'm trying to get to is this. Odell Beckham Jr. is a superstar player that when he went and played with Baker Mayfield, people were calling him washed up. But now that he's back with a guy like Matthew Safford, he's playing well. Cooper Cup was a top 15 wide receiver with Jared Goff, but he's a top three wide receiver with Matthew Safford. What I'm trying to say is this. Quarterbacks make wide receivers better. Wide receivers don't make quarterbacks better. Devontae Adams is a great player, don't get me wrong, but Aaron Rodgers is the reason why he's such a great player, right? If Devontae Adams plays with Jared Cook and or I'm sorry, with Jared Goff, or if Devontae Adams plays with Matt Castle, or if Devontae Adams plays with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, they're not the same type of wide receiver if he, as opposed to if he plays with a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Now, obviously, I think Devontae Adams would continue to have production with Derek Carr, but you can also argue, is it going to be the same amount of production at the same time? Is it worth paying $30 million for that? 
I don't know. I, I think the Raiders may be better off just drafting a first round wide receiver. You have the 22nd overall pick. If you really believe in a guy, trade this year's first round pick and next year's first round pick or next year's second round pick. Get into the top 10 and take that guy. Take the, the best wide receiver that's available. At the same time, I just saw Gabriel Davis go for 200 yards and four touchdowns yesterday. I just saw Michael Pittman Jr. a couple weeks back go for 150 yards. All right. I don't think getting a receiver in the first round is the only option. I think you can get production out of your other guys as well. That too, there's a lot of other good players. Allen Robinson is going to be a free agent. Michael Gallup, although he tore his ACL, is going to be a free agent. Among some other wide receivers, that'll be free agents. I think there's so much more than Devontae Adams. There's so much more than Jim Harbaugh, right? I, I've, I've said it, I kind of talked about it in my video earlier today, but there's so many things out there that the Raiders can do. I almost feel like the Raiders should skip on Devontae Adams, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time with another video.